Welcome to Trophy TV. It is the match reaction. Everton won, Fulham won at Goodison Park tonight. Just got back from Goodison Park and listen, for me, it's in the context of the game, Everton have gained the point. I think Fulham will be very disappointed on that journey back to London. I think Marco Silva will look at that as two points drop. They, in my opinion, deserved all three points, but Everton have hung on in there and got it and I'm glad, obviously, I'm, I'm delighted for Beto. I think uh, we've seen how much it means to him when he scores. And it was, you know, he should have been on the pitch, in my opinion, at least 10 minutes earlier than he was. And uh, But we'll come on to that in a bit. The manager kept Michael Keane in the side, despite having Jared Branthwaite back on the bench. I think I'll, some people had, uh, had been saying that. That's what they wanted. They wanted Keane to stay in the side. Um and therefore, Brantwaite was on the bench. Everything else was as it was for the team that uh, that beat Ipswich last week at Portman Road. But in truth, it was one of the worst Everton performances for years, for absolutely years. Um, I think there was... Listen, people might say, oh, come on, you sound miserable or you're moaning, but... That was awful. I honestly haven't got a clue what he's trying to do. I've, I've just heard Alan Stubbs saying, you know, if there's a plan, then nobody knows what it is. Um, other than just whacking long balls and hoping Dominic Calvert-Lewin can, can do something with it. There's very little preparation, it seems, into what Everton are trying to do in the final third. I think we saw a team in Fulham who were coached really well, but obviously, you know, I'm going to say that because I am a fan of Marco Silva I think I said this on the show earlier in the week had he not managed Everton he would be the type of manager people are talking about Everton should be looking at to take over with the when the free comes or you know from next season or whatever in the same vein people mentioned Thomas Frank I think Silva's done a great job of Fulham plays good football they were very good tonight the way they knock it round and the, the, you can see what they're trying to do where we, I don't know what we're trying to do I think Sean Dyche's biggest issue in my opinion is that he's caught between two ways of playing and he doesn't he doesn't want to hang his hat on either one and it's not doing him any favours and it's not doing Everton any favours they, uh, Fulham were very much on the front foot and they had a really good opportunity when a ball played to the far post was knocked back for Emile Smith Rowe and somehow he blazed over the crossbar. Alex Awobi then on his own at the back post blazed over the crossbar and he should have done better. They had Raul Jimenez shot that got blocked. They had Adama Traore forced a really good save from Jordan Pickford. They then had Jimenez, one that he got past Pickford and was cleared by Michael Keane. And Everton, it was so strange because the game was it was almost a flat and it is listen just a caveat to this i hate half five kickoffs i think they're awful whoever picked that for sky should be fearing for their job when they go in whoever chooses everton for these games are half five everton fulham are half five on a saturday night how can you put that on telly uh and i absolutely hate them i think they're terrible but the game itself was a bit flat but they just had little moments of quality I think the core I struggled with Smith Rowe. He really did. He was running off me, didn't seem to know where he was. But in contrast to that, Adrissa Garner Gay was the best player on the pitch. He was everywhere. Got Everton out of trouble a few times. Good on the ball. Um and it was from him that Everton had their only real moment in the first half. Twenty five yards out. Tremendous curl and strike at the underside of the bar. Came out. Dominic Calvaloon wrapped it into the net. And for about five seconds, we thought he'd, we'd taken the lead. It was given offside by VA. I've not seen it again, but it's a bit offside. It's offside. Don was off. And then we had a little flurry for a few minutes where it looked like we were going to build some momentum. And we had one that was stood up to the back post. I think it was Jack Harrison done well. And Calvert-Lewin heads it goalwards and it's Jot and drops wide for a corner. And then we had a, a opportunity for Dwight McNeil, but he, he put a an awful ball into the box when we'd worked an angle for him. If he'd have just stood it up, we had Tarkovsky, Keane, Calvert-Lewin all on the back post and Fulham cleared it. Um, 
And that was sort of it in the first half. We got in at the break. Thought the manager might give them a little bit of a rocket. You know, we're at home. Let's get on the front foot. Let's get after Fulham. But we come out for the second half and it was they just had the ball again. And, and we just... It's a, there's a weird thing. I don't... I've said before. I don't mind Everton going to 19 grand a season. I'm trying to bore the life out of those clubs and get results on the road. I've got no issue with that whatsoever. But I think at Goodison, we have got to be the team on the front foot. We have got to be the team that is forcing them back, making them know that they're in a game, getting crosses into the box, getting shots, pressing quickly. We don't do anything. Calvert-Lewin cut a real frustrated figure up front tonight. Listen, did he have a good game? No. But he also had a real thankless task up there tonight. Jordan Pickford knocking long balls to him. And he's got two big lads marking him. And I, I don't know what the White McNeil thought his role in the team is when the ball's up to your centre forward. If you are playing in almost a cheating role, which he is, which is walking around the pitch and only really coming to life when Everton are on the attack, you have to make sure then your running is done around your centre forward. Running off him, getting in the half spaces, getting in pockets. But when there's a long ball to Calvert-Lewin, McNeil's got to be beyond them. So that if Don wins the flick, Dwight McNeil's in it. And he never ever did it. He was poor tonight, Dwight. He's had much better games for Everton than tonight. He just wasn't really on it. And we saw him go off with it. I don't know whether it looked a bit like a knee injury late on. Hopefully he's okay. But he just wasn't at it tonight. And Jai started okay and just never got into it. Jack Harrison worked hard, was sacrificed when I thought possibly it could have been McNeil who came off. For Lindstrom, it was Harrison. Like I say, Idrissa Garnagay, Evans' best player. Michalenko did well as well. He was up against the Dharma Traore, who didn't really do that much. Couple of runs, but other than that, Evan, you know, Micho done all right against them. Um, but we went behind Fulham. The you know Smith Rowe, who is a really good footballer, received the ball, danced around a few of our players like they went there. A be picked up, went on a run, and just bent it into the corner of the net under no real pressure. Placed it beyond Pickford, um, and I don't know whether he didn't celebrate because it was Everton, or he done the out arms cross or he didn't do the hands but he's he's done that for us when he scored he's just stood there so i don't know whether it was a, like a respectful celebration or it wasn't i don't know but he put fulham ahead and they had two or three other opportunities to put the game out of reach most notably one where they stood up to the back post on a wobie a side footed it across the box and it's gone through people's legs on the six yard line we got away with it we kept just banging long balls to Dom. It wasn't working. The manager then, you know, decided to replace Calvert Lewin with Beto and went like for like, which there was there was a lot of disgruntled fans at that stage because nothing changed. Putting you know, took uh, the core I put Mangala on Mangala doing all right when he come on, helping the ball on, but I don't know why. With twenty minutes left, the manager didn't just put Beto alongside Calvert Lewin. This is. I'm going to talk about the manager's tactics in the, my three talking points in a little bit more detail. But I just I don't understand what it, what his thinking is there. Um, and then obviously we lost White McNeil, so he just left it as it was. We lost White McNeil. Everton for some reason then allowed made the decision for play to continue with ten men. And only sort of realised when the ball went out by the dugout and he hurriedly got Jared Brantwaite ready when they'd warned Harrison Armstrong up as McNeil was receiving treatment. Brantwaite come on, Michael Keane got put up front uh, and Michael Keane went up and again through Mick Lyons type 70s Everton style. Um, really good flick for Beto. Beto ran on at the shot deflected out for a corner the first time. It's funny, you know, if you get runners behind the lad who's trying to flick ahead header, it sort of gets you in and around the box. So it might be a tactic they want to try. Um, we had a Michael Keane header that he should have really put across the goal to Beto. We, I think he sort of went for goal, but it went wide. But Everton did, deep in stoppage time, did get an equaliser. Ball, it might have been in Jai, I think it was in Jai, threw a ball to the back post. Ashley Young, lovely cushioned, 
Cross and Neighbours Beto, who had an earlier header, Leno made Leno make a save. This time he headed it beyond Leno to equalise for Everton and, and grab a a point, a, a vital point. Um, Fulham went on the offensive straight from us equalising, but you know we saw that out. But who knows? With another five or ten minutes, maybe Everton would have pushed for the victory. But we've ended up with a draw. We'll take it. It's a point. We move on. We still only won one out of five home games, which is not very good at all. And we go to Southampton now next weekend. We're going to have to go there and win that game. That's a tough game, but we need a victory. Um, but that's a week away. Let's see what happens there. My man of the match, Idrissa Garner Gay, for me, head and shoulders above everybody on the pitch. Was everywhere, certainly in a blue shirt, was everywhere. And... Yeah, he was, for me, he's comfortably Evans man of the match tonight. Like I said before, notable mention for Michalenko as well, who I thought did, did quite well. That is it from me. Make sure you put your clocks back, get an extra hour in bed tonight, but not before you've liked and subscribed to the channel. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. See you later.